Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and we are unboxing the Eversone Celine today. This is an awesome new machine created by Eversone, and it comes with 197 stitch patterns. So let's take a look. You can see all of these beautiful stitches that we can make with this machine, including an alphabet. So that is really nice. And I love that it has this nice sturdy little diagram for all of them. So we can pop that up on our machine. We also have our instruction manual here and our warranty certificate. Make sure to fill that out. If you need any help with that and you buy your machine from leahday.com, just let me know. And this uh, sewing machine manual is pretty hefty. I'm actually pretty surprised. Uh, it's pretty long and has lots of details about how to use the different feet and features on this machine. So now let's keep going with this unboxing and see what else comes in the box. We've got, it looks like a sewing machine cover. And then now this is the tricky part. How do we get it out of the box? I personally like to lay the box down and it looks like I've got it uh, right side up. So we're gonna go this way and I'm just gonna slot the styrofoam and I'm just gonna slide it right out of the box. So there we go. And uh, on the side of the machine, I should have spotted this, but I think it was tucked into the one side and that is our extension bed. So this has little legs you can pop up. It has a really nice pink color. I think that's really cute. And that is gonna extend our table surface if you have the machine popped up on a tabletop. Now right here in the center, we have a bag of tools and feet. Lots of little things to go through. And we've got our power cord and our foot pedal. There we go. And then now the moment you've been waiting for. Da, 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 da. So here is the Eversone Celine, really pretty light pink color. Now I'm gonna reach in, let's see here, what's the easiest way to, yep, just slot it out. And this machine is 14 pounds, so it's not gonna be super, super heavy. It's actually really reasonable. And this is gonna be a great machine to take with you on trips, traveling, uh, or as just a lightweight sewing machine. I think if it's anything like the Eversone Sparrow 20, which I've used for several years, it's gonna be great for piecing, quilting, applique, anything that we wanna do with it. So now that we have gotten it out of the box, let's go through all of the feet and tools that come with this machine. So we have four bobbins, including the bobbin that comes wound on your machine. You have a spool cap and felt, two different screwdrivers, a brush that also has a seam ripper inside, and then a spool pen. This gets installed on the top of the machine. This is an edge guide or sewing guide and a little pack of needles. Installed on the machine is a all-purpose presser foot, kind of a zigzag foot. That's letter T. Letter I is a zipper foot. We have a button hole foot, and we have an overcasting foot. F, which has this white plastic guide that is a blind hem foot. A is a satin stitch foot. And then this one with the little blue on the end is a button sew on foot. And then we have this little extra piece here, and this looks like it attaches to our decorative stitch plate. You just slot this on, and I'll show you how to attach this to the machine handlebar. So that locks in really securely, and then there's a hole here on the side of the handlebar, right here close to our tension area, and you're just going to press that into that hole, and then you can leave the handle up, or slot it down, and then you can rotate this. Let me pull it back out, because you can just rotate it when you want it facing up, whenever the handle is down, just rotate that around, and it's really stable, and that way you can see all of your decorative stitches at any time. Let's also install our spool pen. There is a hole back here near the bobbin winder, and you're just going to press that down firmly into that hole. There we go. Now let's wind a bobbin. So I placed the felt here on the vertical spool stand and I'm gonna actually use this horizontal spool stand and that spool cap to wind my bobbin. 
So I take it, the thread, and I go through this guide, and there's really helpful diagrams here to guide you through this. So make sure, I did find that the thread kind of wanted to hop out of that a little bit, so make sure that that's fully seated going through that tensioner, and then we're going to actually thread through one of the holes on our bobbin. So some machines advise you to do this and some machines don't. This particular one does include this in the manual, so that's the way we'll do it. We click the bobbin over to the guide, to the stop, and then notice that I have my foot pedal right here. I wanna show you that you can wind this bobbin with just your start stop button. So hanging on to the thread and setting my uh, speed slider to about the middle, I'm just gonna hit the start button. Now, if you want this to speed up and not take a million years, just simply increase the speed of the machine. Now, if you wanna break this thread and not have it be messy, then just grab your seam ripper and give that a little uh, cut. And then now we can get back to winding. And it's just a habit of mine to run the thread through my fingers as it goes, but obviously you can let it go. You don't have to do that. And you can go even faster, that's just, on the front of the machine, I'm just adjusting the speed slider here to the front in order to increase the speed. So this is gonna wind, it does not have an automatic stop. It's just gonna rub up against this little guide here. So you have to pay attention to it and actually click it over whenever you're done. So you will know that the bobbin is full whenever it is not rotating as fast. So here I'm gonna slow it down a little bit and you can see what happened. The bobbin was no longer moving smoothly because it's rubbing up against this guide. So that lets you know that your bobbin is full and you don't wanna overfill your bobbin. That's just generally not all that good for your machine. So now that we have wound our bobbin, let's thread our machine and start sewing. So we're gonna get started here with this first guide, slot through the back side of this guide and then head on down the front. Now make sure that your foot is in the up position. We wanna make sure our foot is in the up position so that way the tension dial, which is through here, the tension discs are nice and open so that way our thread can slot through. So we're gonna go down around and back up and then down to the needle. And there is a guide here, just pop around that. And it looks like I still have a little bit of saran wrap here on the machine from packing, so I need to get that off. And then now there's one more guide here right at the needle, it's right above the needle. And then I can use my needle threader slotting from the left to the right and it'll pull right through. So there we go. This machine does come with a built-in needle threader and thread cutter. So there we go, that is how to thread the top thread. Now let's thread the bobbin. So we're gonna make sure that our bobbin is rotating counterclockwise according to the diagram here on the machine. So just take it and pull on it, make sure that the thread is spinning off in the direction indicated. We're gonna place it down into the bobbin case we're gonna wind it up and around, and then it will cut the thread right here on the bottom. And you can go on ahead and cover it. You don't have to pull the thread up before closing the cover. So there we go. It's all threaded up and ready to stitch. To install this presser foot back, I'm gonna click on, there's a little lever here on the back of the foot, and I just press that, and then the foot pops right on. And now I can take two pieces of fabric, just layer them together, and then let's try out some of those decorative stitches. I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread first just by hitting the needle down, needle up, and it made that loud sound, guys, just simply because it was the first time it ever did it, uh, and certainly the first time today. Keep that in mind. Uh, whenever a machine is just getting started for the day, it usually has a little reset. So here you can see the start stop function. You just hit start and this is right in the middle. That speed slider here is right in the middle at that speed. I could speed it up, but I probably wouldn't be able to do this just by hand then. I would need to probably uh, use the foot pedal to have a little bit more control. Here, if I want even more control, I can slow it all the way down, drop that needle in the down position and then rotate it around. Hit the start start button again, 
and rotate it around. So this is a way to have really good control as you're stitching these stitches and getting some practice going. So I'm gonna change to stitch number five and we'll hit that start stop button again and just check out what that zigzag looks like. And again, we can speed it up if we want to. It's entirely how fast you're comfortable with. And I'll hit that start stop again. Now you notice the needle up, needle down. Whenever you hit that button, it sets it to be ending in that position. So here, if I switch back to my one, number one stitch, I hit start and I stop it, the needle's always ending in the down position. If I hit that button, the needle is now gonna always be up. So I hit start again and stop you see the needle is up. So it's an interesting feature and it's something that I absolutely love, especially when I am piecing or free motion quilting. Now, while we're talking about stitches, you might be curious about how to adjust your stitches. Right here, you can see we have a reduction on the stitch length. This is now at two. 1.5 and then here we have our stitch width. Now, because I just switched to a straight stitch, the width is really just indicating center needle position. So let's switch to another stitch. Number six is our uh, kind of st stitched zigzag. And what we can do is we can definitely play with the width of that stitch, taking that down to four. I could take my stitch length up to 1.5 or two. And then now I can hit the start, start, stop, start button and see what that produces. It really does make a lot of sense to take some time and play with these stitches. They of course have a set standard um, set of settings as far as length and width, but you can absolutely play with that in order to create some really creative designs. So that is it for our unboxing of the Eversone Celine. You can find this machine on my website, leahday.com slash Celine. You can also find our additional foot sets, including the Eversone Deluxe Quilting Foot Set. This foot set is very special. It comes with a patchwork foot with a guide. It comes with two different walking feet, a really nice, very large bottom darning foot, a ruler foot, which these are super awesome. It has an open slot in the front too, guys, so that way you can easily thread your needle. You have a standard quarter inch patchwork foot with no guide. I love this particular foot. And you have an applique. This is an open toe applique foot. It's kind of stuck down in there, uh, but I hope you can see that foot as well. And then this is our stitch in the ditch foot. It has a guide right down the center to help you with stitching in the ditch. So if you would like to check out this deluxe quilting foot kit, along with your ever sewn Celine, come and check out my website, leahday.com slash Celine. Until next time, let's go quilt.